Well, it's been a while since we were on this horse, so I guess I'd better get something up or you all take off onto somebody else's uh, blog or website, and I certainly don't want that to happen. So anyway, if you remember the last time, uh, I told you we were going to start off with the hoofs, because I think that's uh, one area that's difficult for a lot of people, and it's uh, important that uh, you get a nice looking hoof, at least I think it is. So when we cut out our piece, I told you to uh, make sure you keep these pieces, don't throw, toss these into your wood bin, save these because these make good practice pieces to work on before you actually start on the hoof on the horse. And that's what we're going to do today. Now, here's one that I did uh, quite a while back on another horse I carved. See, I practiced too. And this is what we're going to do. So before we do that, let's just uh, talk about the horse's hoof just a moment. I've got my anatomy book here which has some good drawings of the hoof in here. Now we have the hoof, er, the bottom of the hoof area is made up with the pastern, that's this knob right here. Oh, wait, excuse me. The past, the fetlock, this is the fetlock, what they call a fetlock, which is this knob right here. The pastern, the narrower part right here. And then it goes on down to the hoof. There's a coronet, what they call the coronet, runs across the top and the hoof grows out of the coronet. You'll see on a horse's hoof there's a white band generally along here where that's sort of like the white area on your fingernail. The hoof grows out of that area. Now, if we go back here a couple pages, here's the hoof from the bottom. Now on this horse, you only have to worry about that on one leg, the one that's cocked. That's the only part you need to worry about there. So you're only going to carve that once. And what this is, is this is what is called the frog. And then there's the hoof that comes along here. Now when they shoe a horse, they'll trim this off flat. And even carve down the frog and uh, nail that shoe on there. And a uh, Ferrier told me once when he was shoeing our horses that a horse has five hearts. It has the heart that's in its body and it has four on its feet. And if you look at the frog here, it sort of looks like a heart, doesn't it? Well, what this soft part does is it pumps that blood up and down the leg and it keeps the horse's hoof healthy. Because if they don't get uh, nourishment in their feet down there, they're going to founder. And a lot of times when they founder, the only thing to do is to put them down because their life becomes pretty painful. So anyway, on your hoof, the first thing you should do is the same thing I do when I carve a cowboy boot, is I draw the shape of the hoof on the bottom of the foot. because that determines what comes up above it. So you just do that and on this hoof, being as your grain's going up and down and that slants forward, one thing you don't want to do is carve down from the top. It's best in this part to carve up from the bottom so your chip goes away On the main part of the block. Just sort of get all these saw marks off of here. Now this part back here, being as it slants this way, into the block, we have to turn it up and carve down this way. 
Because if we did the opposite, we'd risk splitting it off, and we certainly don't want that. Okay, so there we have the bottom of our hoof shaped to the so to the shape of the hoof. This hoof's a little larger, but that's all right. That's a bigger horse. Uh, now we can start carving in to the uh, pastern there. Just kind of watch it as you're going along here. Make sure you don't take too much off. We're getting pretty close there. It's going to be a pretty narrow one. Lock up here. Did you know that a horse's back hoof is not as large as its front hoof? And that's because the majority of the horse's weight is supported on his front feet. That's why you'll never see a, a horse cock the front foot. He generally raises one foot like that and rests it, stands there a while, then he'll shift his weight, raise the other one over and rest that one a while. But if you see the balance line of a horse is about right here. So that's where most of the weight is right there. There we go. See, that wasn't very hard at all. Just round it out. Notice how I turned it around and I'm working on the front. That's because the grain, in relationship to which way the wood's going, changed. If I 
kept doing that up here. I'd end up splitting this off. I don't want that. There. Now we can bring this area of the hoof like here. We can narrow that down towards the top. Doesn't have to be a lot. See, I'm staying away from this edge out here because, remember, I, I established the shape of the hoof right off. So that's, that's the line I want to keep right there, okay? There we go. We can narrow this area down here just a little more if we want. There we go. So let's draw our cornet band in here. It starts right there. Kind of goes back at a slight slant. See that right there? How I it's narrow up here and it goes back to where it's wider back here on the back. Alright. So I just carve down to that. Cross there like that. So there we carved a coronet band. Now what I want to do is I want to go ahead, whoops, and uh, bring that hoof down some more. Get rid of that bump right there. So the hoof wall goes right into that coronet. Judy lost her first horse, or sugar, excuse me, to founder. We had to have her put down because it became so painful for her to stand. A lot of people think that founder is when a horse gets a rock in its hoof. Well, not really. Founder's a Pretty, very serious condition as far as a horse is concerned. It's where the bone inside the hoof separates from the hoof wall. Right on the picture. Give you a little lesson in anatomy here. 
this bone right here it separates from this hoof wall right here it's like uh, it's like the bone in your finger if it's separated from everything and then it rotates it rotates like this and the pressure because it has no it's lost its hold on the hoof wall the pressure and weight of the horse force it right down through the bottom of the hoof and it will actually come out the bottom of the hoof. Now you can imagine how painful that would be. And uh, we tried to save Judy's horse but unfortunately that bone was pushing down so far that it eventually cracked the inner part of the hoof wall, her hoof sole here, and there was just nothing nothing else we could do for the horse so we had to have it put down. Sad, but that's just one of the things that happens when you have horses. Alright, we're getting there. Okay, now I'm going to shave this down just a bit here. this is a caricature we can kind of get away with some stuff and by that I mean we can leave our bumps like the fetlock here and things a little larger than they normally would be that's okay we can uh, just put a couple little grooves back here to indicate the hair because the hair is kind of thick and long back here on the back of the fetlock that. Now this part here, now being as this hoof is going to be down on the ground, we don't have to uh, <laughs> we don't have to show much detail. So what we can do is we'll just draw an X here. Like that. Okay, just like that. And we'll take this out up here. There. You can kind of just scoop out that little thing right there. And that captures that detail right there. See, here's our X. Right like that, okay? And then this one down here. Take this one out. the bottom of the hook. Add enough pencil marks here. Kind of clean that up just a little. I think it's time for old reliable to get a new blade here pretty quick. And then we can take our knife and make this a little better looking there. That. Now, if we want to put shoes on him, here's a horse with shoes. And generally, when a farrier will shoe a horse, depending on the farrier, this shows three holes. If you wait just a second, I'll show you a horseshoe. Okay, here's a couple of horseshoes. These are from our horses. I keep them, keep them around. Never know when you might need another horseshoe. So anyway, as I was saying, a horseshoe, standard horseshoe for just a normal size horse, generally comes with four nails on each side. There's one there. Two, three, four. Now, uh, this is from, I would say this is from Judy's horse. 
sugar. And Bing is, uh, that was a smaller horse. He only used three nails to hold this, uh, this shoe on. Okay? Now here's one off a of Boomer. As you can tell, it's a lot larger. And he used four, all four slots to hold Boomer's shoe on. You can even see where Boomer wore his shoes out right there, right on the toe. Where Judy's, well, I guess hers is worn on the toe up there a little bit too, but not as much as Boomer did. But anyway, you can also see these these shoes. Let's see, this is. A, well, I can't make out the size there. But believe it or not, these are the same size shoes. It's just that uh, to get them on the Boomer's feet, he rebent it. Well, he actually bent both of them. He rebent it to fit Boomer's foot. So anyway. So when we carve, or when I carve anyway, or indicate a horseshoe, all I do is just indicate the very back of it. Because generally on a horse's hoof where the shoe is, find that again. shoe comes off the back of the hoof. So that's about the only thing I indicate. There's no reason to carve the whole shoe, whole shoe on there. So you can just make a little cut there and a little cut there. Do that on each side. See there, that's all you really need right there. If you want, you can make a little notch there. Yeah. See there? Just keep her simple. And then when we get ready to paint it, we'll just take our little burning iron and we'll just make a little spot there, there, there. We'll give this one three on each side just to indicate that there's some nails there, okay? So that's, this is probably really one of the most difficult parts of the horse is the hoof and you saw how easy it is if you just, you know, take your time, divide it up into areas, make sure you outline the bottom of your foot first and uh, just bring everything along together and it's quite easy. Now on this one here, you're going to basically do the same thing, draw on the bottom of the hoof, just like that, and we'll do the same thing. Remember, just remember how your grain goes so you don't split anything off, and you see how that's splitting it's not really flaking off the way I want to want it to. It's really splitting off. So I'm going to turn that around and come at it this way, to where I have a little bit more control over those chips. Because I want to be the one who determines what happens when you're taking the chips off. I don't want the wood determining that for me. Side. Let's see, 
If it works, yeah, this will work back here the same way it did on the front. So basically what we're doing back here is the same exact thing we did before. We're just working at a different angle, but it's, it's the same thing. So when you're working on your horse here, the beauty of this again is you can separate these things. The only fragile part of this horse will be right here. Because that grain is running straight up and down, like that. So when you start narrowing this area down, that's going to get pretty fragile. But by doing it apart like we are here, you can support that leg as you carve it and not really run the risk of uh, it snapping on you. This leg here. I wouldn't worry about these other legs so much because the grain's running with the length of the leg and they're very strong. So, what we'll do in the next video, and I'm assuming you guys can go ahead and carve these other feet, what we're going to do in the next video is you'll have these feet carved up to about in here. And uh, we'll go ahead and finish the legs on up to the body. We're on the inside of the horse now. So we won't want to carve above that line. This will come down like that. But like I said, only, you know, go ahead and do your feet and carve up to this area right in here. You really don't even have to take this down very much if you don't want to. And we'll do that in the next video. But definitely don't carve above these two areas here. Because if you do, it's going to look funny. Find our lines in there, they're all right there. I know where that one is. That one's right there. Okay? And we'll do that in the next video. So your feet will be looking like that when I see you the next time. Okay? Well, my production assistant told me I forgot to show you how to carve the bottom of this other foot. So anyway, I'll do that now. I went ahead and I blocked this out just like we did the other one here. Okay? Now, I'm going to do the same thing as I did before with my X. Now down here on the bottom, when you're doing the X, make sure you allow for the, the shoe. Okay? Alright. Now we'll just take our knife and we'll just gently go around this get up there towards the front, I'd make sure you got your knife going with the grain and not across it or so the front of the hoof might chip off. Just bring that on around like that. You can see I penciled in the frog there. Now we'll just take that chip out. So there we've indicated the shoe. Now we'll carve down at a slant on each side of the frog. Like 
that. Come back and take that chip out. center line in there, like that. And that's really all you need. Now you can go back and do like we did the last time. Just to indicate the back of the shoe. And then just a slight little groove right there to indicate back end of the shoe, like that, very good looking at it there, and there you go, okay, not very hard at all. One thing uh, you should watch out for, feet around here is you want to keep the point of this hoof touching the ground so as you're whittling up here on the front of this thing make sure you don't whittle off the end of it. So anyway keep that tip down on the ground you don't want it raised up okay that's important. So let's just review here quickly what we've done make sure we've done it right. Now this might look finished, but it's not. This is just, uh, you know, roughed out right now. We'll come back later and go over everything once we get the horse pretty well wrapped up, just to make sure, and we'll make some adjustments to these legs, okay? But let's just review for a second what we did. All right, I think even though this is a caricature now, remember that, so it's not going to be as realistic as the real one, naturally. So, but let's just review. We've got our hoof wall we're indicated real well. We've got our shoe there. We've got the coronet band indicated. We still have a little work, oops, still have a little work to do on that to make make it look better. We've got the uh, pastern area indicated, and we've got the fetlock, and we're just about up to where we are with that foot right there. So everything is looking good. At least I think so. So. You guys should have enough info now with these two feet to where you can go ahead and do all four feet on your horse. All right? And like I said earlier, next time we'll go on up the leg and finish it up to the leg up to here because we don't want to work on any area up in this area up here until we get these two pieces glued together because we want a nice invisible joint just like on this fella here. Alright? We want everything to come together at the same time up there. So until next time, I'll see you later.